Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. One game, two teams, and one more spot to make it to playoffs. AJ, Pikarinu versus Smiley Face. What do you think, my dude? Well, I'm thinking both teams showcase two very similar strategies and two very similar ideals against the Pappies, but one executed it much better. And that was Smiley Face wound up winners very quickly when compared to this slugger fest. That was about 40 minutes uh, in the very first set that we saw between uh, Pikachu Noobs and the Pappies. Well, we saw Smiley Face take it down about 25 <laughs> minutes. So just completely, you know, taking over and they're going to be my tip for going into this uh, next game is smiley face taking it over them well let's jump into picks and bands and see what these two teams got will we see the same kind of rundown comp we saw from both of them last games potentially but all i know aj is you've told me about the world's meta before mm. which is everyone plays super turtly because nobody wants to lose I got a feeling this is going to be a similar situation. It's either going to be both teams pick the absolute most meta picks and drafts that they can and play it safe. We're going to see one, maybe two kills before the one team fight that decides the game. Or both teams decide to go it and just come out guns blazing, 20 kills in three minutes, just smork fest. Whoever comes out on top comes out on top. Whoever stands with a gallon of blood in a gobbler just wins. I'm liking the W key option. That sounds like fun. That sounds like a fun game to watch. I do like me some arena. Mm. Well, this, this this would be arena, but on steroids. This 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 would be just absolute carnage. Just loads of fighting around mid camps. Loads of fighting around the gold fury. And so far, with a couple of these ban options, it is starting to tilt in that direction a bit more. Cthulhu, Guan Yu, more suited for that mid-game sort of fighting rather than the early-game sort of fighting. Sukuyomi, the one that obviously stands out as the early-game fighter. Yamoja, good throughout all stages of the game, so doesn't really indicate anything to that mm -hmm. sort of that sort of uh, standpoint. Well, the Kuzumbo is going to be banned out as well. Perhaps Pikachu Noobs were taking notes over that last game. Noticed how much of an absolute menace Agent was on the Kuzin Kappa himself. So that's going to be a quick little Banarowski for him. But likewise, on the other side, Pikachu is going to get banned out there. Ra, just as good on Pikachu as it is on Chekyo, I would uh, wager to say. Maybe... The green is not as good as hitting those freehand snipes, but definitely has a good raw in his back pocket. No! <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was about to say something there, and then all of a sudden, I just see the set locked in. I'm just like, I'm going to wait for Blazy to respond to that, because I know exactly uh... what he's going to do. <laughs> it's time once more. Rise, my minions. Stop, Stop picking Rise. Sets. It's enough is enough. I'm sick of it. Get him out of here. <laughs> Have we seen Set win a game other than uh, Belt Slap's game against uh, Puppies earlier? Have uh, we seen Pico Set win a game? Picarinoobs, too, used it against uh, the Puppies. They used it as Set ADC as well, and they managed to get the win. So, it's got success if you aren't the Pappies. And now it's time to put that to the ultimate test. Uh, does it continue to have success if you aren't the Pappies? It's Persephone and Hercules, though. I'm not sure I like giving Persephone and Hercules up to pick this set. It's... Mm, it, at least that sour taste in your mouth. You know, the one where you go, I made a bad choice here. Two questions for Smiley Face. Can Gunter pull out the Persephone? And okay, scratch that. Carly's on the table, which means this is either set ADC or I pray to Lord Ganesh that it's solo. It's gonna be ADC, you no, know, it's gonna no, be ADC. I can dream, AJ. Okay, I can dream. <laughs> You can dream, but this this is your nightmare. Well, welcome to your nightmare. I think you're gonna like it. Osiris is going to be taken up here for Smiley Face. 
Could be the jungle, could be the solo lane. It definitely flex options there. Most likely going to be the solo lane. Could even be the ADC. It's been this sort of day. Welcome to Wacky Town. Um, Kukulin also taken off the table. Yep. We're definitely on the train to Waxville. That's, uh... Yeah. Kukulin ban Erlang. Sensible ban. Erlang's pretty good right now. Smiley Face had a really good game on Erlang last game. Perfectly fine with them banning that out. What is the... What is the rationale between this Kukulin ban? What? Why? Well... Kukulin does quite well into Osiris in lane because he can use his Salmon Leap to get out of range of the Judgment Tether as well as just use it to, quote, teleport uh, when the uh, stun timer ends. Because if you fire off uh, your leap as you get stunned, and this is with pretty much any stun in the game, you will just teleport to the end of your leap. Heimdall, ADC. So we actually have a proper Hunter ADC to go up against the set in the ADC position. Oops, good safety. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it's good repositioning with the Bifrost to get away from the set, so I do like it a lot. King Arthur going to be the matchup into the Osiris. I don't like King Arthur into Osiris. Osiris just has a lot more bully options, especially now that Glad Shield's out the game. For healing, that is. Achilles support. Yep, 100%. Arthur solo. Yep. Yanis ADC? No. You, you, you were so ADC? close. You were so close. You were so close. Let, let's let's rewind. Let's go back. Let's go back. Yeah, you were close. Yanis mid. Yes. Kali ADC. <sighs> Please. Just show us the next pick. Okay, Thank you. It's, 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 it's Hamaturasu. <laughs> I, once again, okay, so I'm assuming this is going to be an Amy in the jungle, Osiris going into the solo lane, and Hercules being picked up as the support. I mean, all three warriors excel in two of those positions, but, they, but it's still like that, again, that, you know, they excel in two, one god accelerate excels in another two, in one and then another one and then it's like the triangle thing going Her on yeah, hercules is good in solo and support osiris is good in solo and jungle kind of and amy can pretty much do all three does that pretty much yeah so Great. a lot of flex <laughs> potential here on smiley face we could have to just go into game and see what it is i think i can't believe there's another it's osiris ADC. jungle okay I can get behind Osiris Jungle. Bevy Monster's going to be on this Amaterasu, and I think that's a pretty decent matchup mm. into uh, King Arthur because Silence is really mess Arthur up because Arthur is all about the face roll, right? Mm. You just put your head on your keyboard and you just yes. roll around, and that's how you play Arthur. So if you have a Silence and he can't roll around, that's a really good thing. Mm. I thought we were going to see just both these dual lanes fight it out very early on because they both have very aggressive comps in mean, achilles set you want to just fight early and if you're hercules heimdall you honestly don't mind taking the trades early as well you swing as the heimdall and you are obviously playing as hercules well blinking in already is itori gets a nice two-man stun off but is pushed back by agent so Overall, I think that trade favors a smiley face. They have a lot more in the terms of healing innately. Agent can recover that health a lot better off than Ituri can, at least for now, until that two comes online, that Radiant Glory. He's able to heal up off of his attacks. Ekrom is taking a lot of poke. I Davy's really utilizing that skewer very, very well. And just throwing it out whenever he can, not to set the way for Ekrom as well. Both dual lanes deciding to finally go for their purple buff after a bit of a wander around in the jungle beforehand. Are going to be used by both dual lanes onto the buff itself. So we're going to see Alpha Harpies contested a bit later. And it Captain OT finds himself in a bit of a bad spot in terms of health, but not so much as Itori, who's finding himself under tower line. Luckily, not quite, quite under tower. Oh, look who's here. He is able to get out, but the blinking from Agent is going to be good. One, two, slip, slap. Down he's going to fall, and now Davey is up. Uh, he's up. 
a creek without a paddle at the moment, but is it able to get the turn around it? Agent falls down, but the slows from Ferrari are going to be too potent. He's not going to be able to find a turn around for that, or indeed the escape. Ferrari's going to get credit for that kill. One for two. Davy definitely does come out normal. Well, not on top, but he's able to really mitigate the loss of that fight by getting the turn around. Oh, Maul, meanwhile, going to buy himself in mid lane. He finds himself a small lead when compared with his mid lane opponent because he's been splitting it with Raphio this entire time. Raphio not electing to make his patented early game rotation towards the dual lane and his dual lane get punished for it. I think it's an interesting move. I think Carly doesn't have the best level 2 gank. So maybe that's why we, ch uh, we see uh, Raphio opt for this safer play, doesn't go for the left hand side, instead decides to get a little bit more farm under his belt, tries to get to that late game Kali state a little sooner. Davy B. Grassolatori has his dash interrupted, and that's yet another kill, three for one, and Smiley Face getting off to the start. I sort of expected him to get off to, as my tip to win this game. Well, we saw Hercules last game. This oh, is how Hercules should be played. And Ekrom is able to get way out of dodge. Long cooldown. Must be a long cooldown on that one. I'm, I'm talking about, I'm looking at it being at least a minute on that. Essentially, and with the engagement factor here for Davy, it could spell disaster for Ekrom. That's exactly what it's gonna do as well. Davy's here to answer, uh, ask the question, which one of us are dead? And the answer is, Skewer. Listen, if I'm gonna be sat here watching set ADC all night, I can at least make some good puns out of it. Itori is getting punished for being out of position. Down he falls, Igunta gets credit for the kill. Spidey face looking a little stronger every day. We have to put you on some sort of limits. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. Like, and this, today, you have been, you, you've gone way over that limit, you know. Uh, 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 we're setting up a pun jar for you in no! uh, when SCC returns. Yes, there's going to be a pun jar. Every time you make a pun, you donate money to the pun jar. Where does the pun jar money go? I don't know, it goes Can towards... It, at least it, go charity? it goes towards Hindu's typewriters that he uses to write the oh. scripts. Okay, I can be okay with that. That's the that's sacrifice I'm willing to make. Alright. Now that that's all sorted, Smiley Face looking to establish just a few more bits of pressure around this uh, duo side of the map. As they find themselves uh, with just over 1,000 gold in the lead. So we hit the 5 minute mark. Experience difference shy of 1,000. So all things said and done, despite the fact they got themselves off to a blistering start in the duo lane, the kill from Davy onto Ekrom has really settled things back down to an even state. For sure. Now that Rapio is level 5, he's got a little bit more gank potential, which means, well, not quite that much gank potential just yet, Rapio. Looking to potentially dissuade this gank here onto the blue buff on the right-hand side. But two people there, both of them being level 6. Rapio's not really in a good position to deal with that, and... He's looking a bit rough in terms of his uh, squaring up to this Osiris, but does just about ding level 6 off of that. Who is the target for Kali? My guess would be it should be Gunter or Ekrom. Ekrom, if they're planning on making a lot of plays over on the duo side of the map. Gunter, if it's just, I want to have somebody who's my mark who I can kill. Uh, because you you want to put the Persephone down before she gets off that uh, grasp of death, before she gets off the you know massive ultimate that she has. Even 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 if you manage to kill her, she will probably still fire it when she's dead because passive exists. But at least you delay it for long enough that your team can spread out. For sure, you don't want any of your any of your teammates to be sent to Bramble Jail, so you want to make sure that you take care of the gardener as quickly as possible and smiley face actually look at the positioning right now they could be looking towards no i, I thought they were gonna maybe cheekily steal away a gold fury but i think they were just looking for the oracles there. just a little bit of vision is what the doctor ordered and some wave clear just go to boot 
Tori and Agent finding themselves rotating a little round a lot more as we have sort of phased into a bit more of a farming phase of the game. The bright and early start of kills has started to die down as teams calm down. That's going to favor Picarinum's 2 draft a lot more. Their draft accelerates better into that late game. So if they're able to get their items, get their farm up as quickly as possible and shorten this early game sequence, it bodes well for them in team fights. You know what I find really interesting here, AJ? If you look at the level difference between Itori and Agent, Agent only just about hit level 6, and Itori is pretty much a full level ahead, maybe about 3 quarters, a half-ish level. It's still a pretty decent lead, considering he's 0-3-0 right now, compared to 1-1-2 one, one and two for Agent. That's not really what you want to see, especially when you gave a kill to the Hercules early. Absolutely. I, I was expecting my Hercules to be level 7, maybe even level 8, joining us in, you know, the, the promised land of high levels. But no, it's still relegated to the same level as the support we've been picking on since minute 1. Um, It's also going to be a different build for him here. Rather than going for this Gauntlet of Thieves early on, I believe that's going to be a Sovereignty Rush coming out from Agent. Could very easily rush into the um, Mystical Mail if he wanted to be hyper aggressive with his build but to to be the good support player that he really ought to be and knows he can be it's going to be the uh, sovereignty for sure so so for those of you who don't know sovereignty is one of these items uh, there are three of them in the game total i think they give an aoe of uh protections you've got your sovereignty which gives your whole team who are around you physical protections you got your Harwood Amulet and, well, Agent trying to cut me off here as I'm going to have to stop talking about that and start talking about the fight in mid that's just breaking out. Bramble is going to be thrown, but it's going to be off the mark there from Gunter. Picarinu hiding under tower and now Ferrari trying to find these harpies, but two-man knock-up from Agent there. It's going to be pretty strong. Ferrari about half HP. He's going to be forced to ult away. I Tori in a bit of a rough spot. Now the Boulder Bolt Bold is going to come through. That looks like Baby Monsters in the next driving seat. Rapio is able to find, sorry, not quite find a kill. He's going to find an assist onto it though. Captain OT is going to take credit for it. And Ferrari might fall down here as well as the Royal Beyblade's charging forward. I Davey gets credit with the kill with the Sand Statue. There's going to be two more kills under the belts of Pika Renoobs, and they're going to be very happy about that. Oh, smiley face, definitely not smiling at their ADC there. Pings coming out angrily on the map as Ekrom's just sat there clearing out the oracles. Davey, meanwhile, makes a rotation, makes it count. Gets his team back up to level peggings on the kill columns, and they're only down about 500 gold, which, ooh, that sounds like it's a first blood bounty. That's all that separates these two teams. Very easy to make up. We've seen Picarino be able to... Uh, be very effective in these farming phases when they're behind finding more farm than their enemies farming super effectively Splitting farm properly agent getting a little handsy with Itori at the moment But he's gonna back off as soon as he sees Picarinu coming around the corner, but yeah P Picarinu's definitely no slouches in terms of finding that jungle farm Absolutely not and the jungle farm has been found by Itori oh, no. as he's trying to to level 8 versus level 7. Ferrari goes aggressive but gets aggressed on by the members of Picarino 2 defending oh. their buff and Picarino oh, from... Oh, he's not even downtown, he's in a different country altogether with that snipe. From all the way in the US. We're in Europe, that came from the US, that was insane. Davey now under some pressure, does force is forced to use the beads, but Ekrom uses the Bifrost Bridge and also the ultimate there to try and trade out against and his own beads and his own beads as well. I didn't notice that. That's that's pretty much everything for Ekrom and Raphael's kind of hearing that call and going, "Ooh, maybe I can get a kill." But Agent is hovering around his ADC for protection, and that's going to be enough to ward off evil Carlins. Yeah, it's 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 like it's like placing a. Um... It, it, well, it's, it's just like placing anything down on the floor. You will just the stop. Conquer. Yeah, yeah, you will. Or, no, oh, you know, it is, it is a conquer. You will stop spiders like from yeah. coming in to your window. Yeah, that. I was trying. To, I just couldn't remember it. I thought it was something else for a second, but no. Yeah. There's a bunch of conquers. 
you burn sage to, to get rid of evil spirits, you put conkers down to get rid of spiders, and you place Hercules's next to ADCs to get rid of evil Kalis. It's, it's the way that the world goes. Checks and balances, but Picarinu as well. We were talking already about Picarinu's ability to find farm in these phases, but on a god like Yanis, who is probably the best farming mid laner in the game, probably he's very easy to get farm on is my point. Very mobile, very quick, gets around the map very easily and is able to find that farm that other players might not be able to. It certainly is probably one of the fastest farming. I'd say gets rivaled by Poseidon and Kakulkin for fastest farming simply because they get a bit of movement speed. They can literally just let their they could sit their ability down on the wave and just walk away. While Sianus is pretty much still mid Cassidy ability and the wave spirit are already dead by the time he's able to move away from it. But all good so far for both of these teams. I think mm. you'll give them I think if you gave them this scenario at the very beginning of this clip, both of them would have shook your hand and said, Yes, let's take it, let's do it. One game, all it takes to qualify for the world's qualifiers on our on your European side of things. Where do I sign up? And I'm. If... Go on, please finish. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, uh, I, I said what I needed to say. It's a, I'm giving uh, it over uh, to you. Okay, well, I, I was literally just going to say I completely agree. These teams must be so thrilled, and to have, to have them both be in this situation, as you said, both of these teams are people, are, are teams who come up through the SOC to be here. Picarinu's most recently in Smiley Face, I believe Phase 3? Uh, yeah, so Smiley Face came out in Phase 3, yeah. uh, and Picarinu uh, qualified in Phase... Well, they qualified from Phase 3 playoffs, so they joined in Phase 4. Yeah. Both of these teams coming up from the SOC so shortly after each other one after the other in fact and really already making their presence known here in the scc showing that they deserve these spots and it's unbelievable to to say that i get to sit here and watch a super competitive match with such high stakes and it's a great game both of these teams are very evenly matched and you can tell that by it being 14 minutes in, 5 and 4, and barely a thousand in. Oh, but Agent wants to try and break that deadlock, going very aggressive in the mid lane, pushing Itori to the side. Rep buff tries to get invaded once again by Ferrari, but to no avail. Good defense so far by Picarinoops to frustrate the Chaos side. And they're gonna say no more of that, thank you. And they're gonna start the Gold Fury, already down to 2,000 health, 1,000 health. It's gone. Picarinoops too. Wakey, wakey. This is a play straight out of Belt Slap's book. Smiley face not happy with how stalematey everything's going. They want to make sure that they've, you know, they, they've got the early game comp, the quote-unquote early game gods. They've got the Osiris, they've got the Hercules, two very early risers, and they want to really extend the amount of time they get to flex that onto Picarinoobs, stealing away that gold fury, and I said there was barely a K between them. Now we're looking a little closer to two and a half. I love Bevy Monsters build. It's, it's just evil. You build loads of attack speed and then you also build a frostbound hammer on top of it because you're a Matarasu. And because you are melee, um, it re Oh. Good dive by oh. Davey. Well, you went a little far. I think the, the trade-off there is maybe not very good, especially if Tori falls down here, but he is finding his way to the portals. Look at that, right on the boundary of the bramble bush is able to find his way out. So a one for one trade, they're both even in kills, in level. I'd say that's fine. Probably favors Picarinu slightly because of the gold lead on Smiley Face, I suppose. I suppose, but I'm gonna look at this, so 1v1 gets both relics and the ultimate down from his lane opponent in Ecro. So definitely wearing the, uh, definitely wearing the trousers in these fights is the high David. And you kind of expect that, right? It takes Heimdall a while to get online, but it also takes Aitori a little while to get alive after he's going to be taken down here by Ferrari. 
Every monster is going to find a wrap here, and the beats will be popped alongside the Ooh. destruction to CCI him away from the pancake flip from Hercules. Very, very well played. Not no knockups for Kali today. Mid lane just clearing out the waves right now as dust settles from that fight, sparked off by uh, I Davies' wonderful solo kill onto E Chrome. But the rest of the fight goes the way of Smiley Face, and it could get even worse for fans of Picarinos too, as the Pyromancer has been started up. And it again, no one from Picarinos in sight. This is where the this is where they're they're being let down. Picarinos are going mano a mano in these fights. They're getting leads in the farm, but Smiley Face have uncontested objective pressure right now, and not because Picarinos can't bite into their pressure. Because they don't even know that the, it's going on. How many wards have been placed by these teams? I want to see. Show me the wards. Well, only two by Rapio, so not as much as you'd expect from your jungler, especially one that's able to get accelerated farm like the Kali. But afterwards, and I suppose Ferrari is also guilty of not warding as much as possible, sitting on three. It's, it's, it's about average where you'd expect it to be at this point. You might see a few more on one or two players or one or two roles sorry depending on if you're watching an spl team or not but this is without the jungle anomalies which has gone on well, it's something to consider rapio tries to go for the gank here onto bevy monster forces out the ultimate so that's a, a big w in his book he's gonna be able to easily secure out this blue buff as well as ekrom getting forced out of lane here on the left hand side it's a win all across the bat map this is what i'm saying right Picarinoobs are definitely winning in terms of pressure and in terms of general farm. But Smiley Face is sneaking away these objectives, getting that gold lead, and that will eventually lead them to a team fight, maybe even just a pick that could snowball the rest of this game in their favor, just because Picarinoobs were looking the other way. Well, if I'm going to be the member of the Smiley Face, I want it to be this mid tier one tower. Just put this Yannis under as much pressure as possible don't allow in space and time to breathe to live um, and i want some more you also give yourself pressure onto these objectives onto the uh, pyromancer onto the fire chain and onto the gold fury when all of them eventually respawn and that's got to be the play from them picarinos do have some pretty decent options in terms of mobility and potential steals you got picarinos alt you got I suppose Aitori's ability to kind of thin the herd if they're taking a lot of damage from the fire giant, but I suppose that the main objective here is Picarinu is looking to steal or is looking to secure with that through space and time ultimate and gonna need to see a lot more ward coverage from Smi uh, from Picarinu if they're gonna hope to do that as, as Gold Fury is just about respawned. It's going to be the only Fury this time, so increased minion presence across the uh, three lanes just for one wave. Agent could be the uh, eye of the conversation here for Picarinos too, as he's taking a fair bit of damage. But thanks to that Shield of Regrowth, he's able to dance around in the thorn bushes. Looking a little bit worse for wear, but the rest of his team now are coming in for support. Rapio forced to jump away from the dazzling offensive, but Agent. Still falling down a little bit lower. Double stun there, but here's the through space of time to drop the rest of the team in. But look at that Persephone ultimate. No one's able to go anywhere, but luckily for the Picarinos, they are able to shred through. They got some big old hedge clippers to help them cut through those vines. Ferrari looks to chase down Rapio, but now under the tier one tower in the mid lane. Go Picarinos. Well, Davy finds four. one, and Captain Oti is going to find his way out. Ikori gets one. Ikori nearly gets the second one, but Kunta is able to find the Aegis. He's going to fall down as the support, but a third kill is taken in favor of Picarinos. His agent is also going to take a spill. Picarinos are going to walk away a lot healthier looking. Only 3k behind now. That fight did them some good, but objectives are still up, and they weren't quite in a position to look for this gold fury. But you know who is? Gunter, because look at all of these plants. Oh my lord, that is a lot of plants, that's a lot of coverage, not anything that they're able to see from, but it's just a lot of coverage. Only Fury is going to go their way, unless Bevy wants to have something to say about it. Gunter is in the area as well, but I think Gunter is going to get zoned away by Rapio very easily. 
no ultimate available for either of these two players who have shown up. And Rapio does have the ultimate. He is going to get credit for the kill. Is portaled out, but no! The tower is going to claim the life of the Charlie after the reset. That's got to feel bad if you're Rapio. Got to be touching and touching at Picarino. Why did you portal me under the tattoo tower? You killed me. me. Like, you didn't have to follow that portal. You could have just waited for the next one to come along because that was the ultimate portal lasting there for about 10 seconds before it disappears. It doesn't have to go through that one. I, I think the, the problem there, though, was Rapio was, I believe, either pinned against the wall or had nowhere else to go. And as soon as he came out of the CC state, he was whooped straight through the wall and under the tower. But you know what? It's fine. Bevy Monster gets credit for the kill. He's already level 20, so it's not like he's getting any further ahead. It's not the worst case scenario. You know, you get the kill onto Gunter as well, stops him from farming, gives Rapio a little bit more time, and also gives Picarinoobs a little bit of space so they can claim this Pyromancer. 100% free here. Picarinoobs 2 finally figure out what an objective is this game and look to take the first one for themselves. Bad news though, for them is that Smiley Face have already taken two right from underneath their noses. Yuri is at a one for one spot, as is Pyromancer, so we're getting closer and closer towards both teams having completely even stats. Picarinos do find themselves behind in gold, but higher in kills. Whilst the Smiley Face is obviously going to be the exact opposite. This game feels almost like a lingering thundercloud. The tension is rising. Both of these teams are playing phenomenally. And it's just about waiting for the thunder to strike and for the rain to start pouring down one way or another. Looks like Smiley Face are looking to put that pressure on as big rotation over onto this right hand maybe over tips the hand a little bit. As the Fire Giant has been started and the dropship is inbound. Here comes the through space and time hits. I don't think it hits anyone, but Aitori eats the ultimate from Ekrom, who then is forced to beads. But look at that tether. No one's going anywhere now. Gotta eat your way through that barrage to... before you can do anything, guys. Davy is gonna start off the party, though. Finds one kill. Now, the Greenoobs could look for the oh, Fire Giant with my space, God. especially... Now that Ekro just ate a chunk of damage thanks to Picarino. And they're looking to engage again. I'm sorry, he's still going in here. Ekro is going to fall down. The support takes credit for the kill. Baby Monster is going to trade it out. But now here comes Rapio. Gunter it should be the target. Can he find him before he falls down? Not quite. Bevy is going to be able to get the heal with the Frostbound Hammer. But the space is still going to be good. Three members get Fire Giant. Even if they're not particularly the members that you might like, Davey, definitely Picarino, for sure. Rapio would have been nice. I mean, he didn't necessarily have to chase. It's just one of the hallmarks of Rapio's play is that he goes very aggressive and sometimes too aggressive. But from a behind situation, Picarino and two have now found themselves ahead. And for the first time in this game, found themselves in with these very minuscule gold lead. I don't even know if you can even count it as one with the amount it was. It's about 100, maybe 200 gold. Uh, it's now just... It was so small that it just swung in favor of Smiley Face. It's just on the border where one, t one team will clear a wave and it'll go one way and the other wave will be cleared on the enemy side and it'll swing back like a pendulum. So basically nothing in it, to be honest. <clears throat> I completely agree. You can't really call it a lead at this point, but with every objective down and half of Smiley Face possessing a fire giant belt, where's the next magnifying glass, AJ? Eh, one of the tier two towers, this tier one tower and mid should just be given up completely. They could like to go for yet more tier one towers, especially the one on the left hand side, furthest away from the fire giant. Or they can look to get the big boy payday, which is going to be the mid tier two tower protected by a load of plants. Well, it's, uh, yeah, that, this is one of the scariest parts of Persephone, right, is on the defensive, she can just build a little fortress of living uh, defenses. And you're not really gonna wanna step into her little garden once she's created it. And you can see that with uh, Picarinoobs 2 here. They're trying to dance around and find a footing in here. Davy's gonna get plucked and forced to bead the driving strike, but Bevy Monster's gonna eat some damage herself. 
Rapio is going to take that tier 1 tower in the right hand side. And now Ferrari's come to meet him. I wonder who wins this trade. I wonder. Rapio has the ultimate available to him. And now the dropship comes through. He didn't account for one thing. The rotation from Pika Redoops is going to take credit for one kill. Now Baby Monster looking to find some more. Davey doesn't have feeds available to him just yet. So Baby Monster is going to get the stun off. But no follow up just yet from Smiley Face. Tier 2 tower is going to be forfeit and potentially now even a Phoenix. I would almost certainly will be a Phoenix. I mean, even without Rapio's gone over to the left hand side. Actually, no, it's going to be a mid tier 2 instead. Wait for Rapio to get back and just have one last hurrah push. But again, that poses its own risks of can you, have you gotten everything you could have done out of the fire giant? I think it's probably the safer play as Ekrom. Speaking of safe, yeet someone into the stratosphere before getting traded out himself. I saw he takes credit for that kill. Davies falls down. Now Davies just trying to run away, but the shell is going to be good so far. Tower isn't quite going to find the damage to take him out. I saw though, also taking some heavy damage from the tower. One more shot will do it, but both of them will get a limp away. Picarino falling very low here. Captain Oti is going to get hot by the plant, but Picarino from out of nowhere gonna get the through space and time saving the life of his solo laner picking up two kills for his team and smiley face are running away picarinoobs giggling all the way to the bank picarinoobs finally get themselves an established comfortable lead and it's all down to the main man himself two zero and seven reads picarino's slash line and he's been playing this yanis like an unimaginable monster He's just here, he's there, he's everywhere. He's everyone's favorite mid laner. Remember what I said just a few minutes ago about the thunderstorm ready to break? Oh, yeah. It broke. The thunder has clapped and Pika Renoobs have gone from being 4k down to being, what? what is this? If my math is correct, 7k up? Yes, this is the point. Well, it's just six and a half. Very close to you know 6.7k, very close to 6.8k. So you know it's close to 7k. Uh, but the 11 and a half to 12,000 experience is very, very big, and it's grown even larger. Than, well, I say it's very, very big. It's impressive on the graph, but only agents level 16. Everybody else is level 20. I mean, you say that, but when the support is level 20 on one team and level 16 on another, that is going to make Agent so squishy, especially against a team with an Achilles that's just going to be able to execute through the Hercules healing. And, well, he's level 20. Aitori is, is a tank at level 20 at, at 30 minutes in, and he's going to be super tanky. He's not going to really be worried about anyone on Smiley Face, really. No one can really uh, chew through him very quickly unless Ekrom is able to unadulteratedly slap him for a half hour. But even then, Picarinoob's now looking to set up around this fire giant with their massive golden experience lead. Picarino trying to get a little bit of damage and is going to do a fair chunk to Agent. This is what I mean. My guy is level 16 and Picarino is able to take away a quarter of his HP with one ability. And he's building, he hasn't really got magical defense on him, is the thing. But then again, Picarino doesn't have too much in the way of percent penetration. So the natural protection is still coming out quite strong for the Hercules, especially on those mitigate wounds when he does have that ability active. Bevy wants to sneak in around like a good silent assassin. Oh. Through space and time has been fired off early, and Rapio's being chased off as is Picarino. Well, you say that, but Gunter's ultimate has also been taken down. Rapio is going to find credit for that kill. Baby Monster was the target. Davey has been very off positioning, but he's looking to walk his way back around the fight. Finds Ekrom, and now it's Captain Oti trying to find Gunter, who doesn't have the ultimate available to him just yet. Ekrom is going to 1v1 Davey. That's revenge for earlier. Ek now it's going to be Rapio jumping away. He does find one kill, but Gunter is going to find a return on him. One for one for one for one for one. Itori now trying to find Gunter. He's just going to limp away with a fraction of the HP, but it's not going to matter. Captain Oti and Zori are going to find him around the backhand side. Goes for the middle of the Gunter, so he is going to be able to do a little bit of damage to Tori, but as I said... just cancelled. Yeah, so Tori is just a big tanky wall, but Ekron walks around the corner! So aced! The Achilles hits him right in the back of the foot! And that's going to be a dead Achilles. Two left standing on the Arena, and only one on the side of Smiley Face.
So we are 31 minutes into our best of one decider. Who gets first? Who gets third? Who gets fourth seed? Push makes some time. Gonna miss. Captain Oti actually stuns out Ekron before he gets into range and into the line of sight of that Yanisol. Ekron with the perfect teleport. That is predictions. There is the beads there from Picarino, but that has got to be one of the most large, wrinkled galaxy brain plays I have ever seen. I, uh, that is the biggest galaxy brain, even more of a galaxy brain. You have an Amaterasu on your team. You have the opportunity to do Fire Giant. Let's do Fire Giant. Yeah, opportunity is a fickle mistress. Davy is able to get there just in time and Fire Giant is dropped. This one is enhanced, so if it weren't for that extra two right next to the three in the time slot, Pikarinu, uh, Smiley Face probably would have found themselves with a Fire Giant belt around their waists, but that enhanced Fire Giant got a lot more HP, a lot more defenses as well, so a lot harder for them to chew through. Bevy Monster looking to potentially ward off any uh, stray Pikarinoops who are trying to do Fire Giant, but look at the positioning from Smiley Face. They've all kind of left the locale and Pikarinoops might have a space here to try and do the objective themselves with Smiley Face are coming in. Tori gonna get slammed into the wall, takes no damage whatsoever. Bevy Monster on a good rotation and it's that Frostbound Hammer that's proving a real pain in the backside here for Pikarinoops too. Rapio and Pikarinoops especially. Ferrari gonna be forced to leap away and that is the mark that's just gotten away from Dakali. Well, on the right-hand side of the fight, Captain Oti is going to get caught out by the Bramble, but he's tanky enough that he doesn't really have to worry. Tori is going to lazy back right in front of Smiley Face, and he's going to be just fine. But the disadvantage to that is that Fire Giant is now much more an attainable target for Smiley Face, should they choose to accept it. Pikarinu is also backing, but he does have the ultimate available to him. Never mind, he's going to cancel the back at the very last second there, and... Choose to stick around for a little bit more fun. A load of shields built up here for Captain Ozzy as he builds his uh, next one, which is going to be the Pridwin. So, every single time he uses this ultimate, which is on a very low cooldown, uh, he will gain a health shield, which will explode. So, this is going to be constantly exploding King Arthur around you. It is a good thing to note, however, that uh, Pridwin does have a 45 second internal cooldown. So Arthur won't be able to abuse that as much as he would potentially like, but still, once every 45 seconds is very, very useful as the Fire Giant fight is starting to break out once again. FG is brought to about 50% HP, and Rapio looking for a cheeky entrance around the side here. Here comes the through space in time. Baby Monster loses about a half of his HP already, and that's going to force Smiley Face to go on the retreat. Captain Oti going very deep here all by himself, and the rest of the green got on the way now. Here comes the Bramble Bush, but Rapio is dead before he can even press the four button up into the sky. Goes Baby Monster, but Captain Oti is getting yeeted into the stratosphere. He's going to fall down, and I'm sure falls straight into a grave down he falls. Now only three members left available for Picarinoops to defend this fire giant. Itori is one of them, and he's looking to uh, to stop this teleport in, but the driving strike from Agent is going to be good. So is the pancake flip. Itori, a bit of a tricky spot here, uses the ultimate, tries to thread the needle to Agent, but not quite able to find it. Picarino is going to be able to find the kill, though, and Itori just manages to limp out, but takes the portal. Baby Monster's waiting for him. How unfortunate. Davy now looking to go 1v2, finds one. Not the two, and it's going to be just Picarino left after this bloodbath ends. And more and more and more. We're fighting and fighting and fighting. No objective so far, either team. And that's going to be good for Smiley Face to stay away for Agent to hit level 20. Going to be good for Picarino too as they finish up some of their last and final items. But man, what a game so far. Back and forth consistently. No team pulling away extravagantly in minute five. It's just good old-fashioned smites who can outwit each other. It's uh, it's definitely been one of those games. Smiley Face we saw had a 4k lead and then Picarino's answered back with a 7k lead just a moment ago. And while they still definitely have that amount of gold ahead, uh, it's not really mattering at this point. As uh, if we can have a look at the builds just for a second, we can see who sold boots. We're still waiting on 1, 2, 3, 4... Five, six pairs of boots on Smiley Face, whilst only one, two, three pairs of boots I can see 
on the other side. So still definitely coming into play. Mm -hmm. About one or two items each for Pika Renoobs as we see Yanis, Kali, and uh, King Arthur already finishing their build. Sorry, I say Yanis. Yanis only having uh, the... the uh, still having the boots, so not a thing for him, but... Choosing to pick up the Magi's Cloak is set. I Davy choosing that little extra bit of CCI, and I think that's going to be a big choice for him. Manages to get away from a yet another dangerous situation as Picarino, uh, as he was caught up by Bevy Monster. If it wasn't for the Frostbound Hammer, he would have been completely safe there, but the Frostbound Hammer just makes it so much scarier to deal with this pick that you kind of just don't want to. Now, <clears throat> if I'm in the jungle and I... I come across an angry looking Bologna with a frostbound hammer in her pocket. I'm, I'm kind of going, yeah, maybe not. Maybe I would I would like to not do this encounter right right now. Thanks, okay, cool, bye. But looking to set up around the Pyromancer RP Karinoobs. They're looking for this pick, as you can see. They're all hiding behind these rocks. Looking for someone to take just a step too far. And Agent could be a target, but... He's going to get out get out just fine himself, as Pyromancer now being looked at once again, potentially, by Idavi. He's not, actually. He keeps positioning for it. He's throwing me off. How dare you, Mr. Set, but he's going to throw out a little Sand Clone there. Looks to get a little bit of poke on these smiley face players, but neither team really wanting to commit to the fight at the moment. Don't blame him for not really wanting to commit to the fight because previous fights have come up with stalemates, has come up with that team losing even though they got the objective. So just wait until you can have a fight that you know you can win and then get the objective afterwards. Well, this could be it as Bevy Monster taking a lot of damage already. Half HP, but she does have a lot of internal healing. So maybe that could be the savior for her. But here comes the through space in time. Drop shipping Pikarinoobs directly into the heart of the fight. Gunter is the target. He's dead already. Captain Ozzy gets credit for that. Kill my Rapio on a warpath. All the distraction. Bevy Monster is the target. Can he find the kill before she dies? Yes, yes he can. And the Blood Forge is going to keep him alive. Another one. Another one. Four kills down for Pikarinoobs and only one on the other side. Davey finds one. That's the Dia side. Pikarinoobs I got to run it down right. Pick up the Phoenix and win! Pikarinoobs are going to playoffs, AJ! Pikarinoobs just all of a sudden win this fight hand over fist! They black, they sacrifice Rapio on the way, but I don't think they care how many people they sacrifice. I don't think they care how long it's taken them. 39 minutes in this game, 40 minutes of play against the Pappies. But again, they don't care. Smiley Face put up good opposition. They put up a fantastic fight, but it just wasn't to be for that team. Pika Renoops 2, split 3, SOC, split 4, SCC Finals as seed number 3. What an amazing story from, as you said, from the open circuit all the way to the heights of the challenger circuit and in just one split as well this team showing us exactly why they're here they earned this place they are here to play and play they are mm. i'm super proud of pikari noobs they they were inducted into the league around the same time i was so i gotta be rooting for my boys i'm super excited to see what they're gonna do at playoffs uh, I'm really excited to see them as well. I think it's been a good settling story here for Rapio as well. As who struggled to find his footing in the European SCC, wasn't really getting where he wanted to be, went over to the Xbox side of things, and now has come back on to the now has come back onto PC, found himself this team, and has got them well, well not just by himself. Davey and Picarino having some fantastic stellar performances. Atori creating the space needed as well alongside Captain OT. Just a great team effort all around from this squad and rightfully taking the seed number three. I want to know how Tori was able to stay so stacked in terms of his farm. 0-3 and 0, we saw him right at the start, but still holding a level lead over his counterpart in Agent. Just so well farmed from Pika Renoobs, and that, that's a strength that we've seen from them all split. You know, they've been able to find these little leads here and there. It's something that we see in Belt Slap as well, that no matter how much they seem to be losing in terms of the kills, the gold very rarely shows them being behind. And that's, well, 
that's even in those times your belt slap is behind on kills, which isn't often. So there is just one thing that does need to improve though from Picarinos too as they go into these finals, and that is buy more wards, Rapio. <laughs> Please buy more wards. But wards do not do jungle damage. <laughs> So, just to wrap things up here in the EU FCC, we're going to go over the standings just one last time from first all the way down to sixth. First off, you're going to have your 5 and 0 victors of Belt Slap. Second seed going to be the Snake Pit. Picari Noobs find themselves in the third and final seed to qualify for the SCC split finals. Smiley Face dropped down into fourth seed just unable to get the victories needed to get themselves into that spot but find themselves outside of relegations Pappies find themselves disappointingly down in fifth seed but mm. i think even more disappointingly will be hawks hotel zero and five throughout the entire split couldn't pick up a win a set win that is they find themselves down in sixth seed and it's unfortunate hawks hotel They've had some promising moments, they've had some promising games, but as you said, not quite enough to find any wins. We'll have to see how they do in SOC, SCC relegations later on, but the thing I'm looking forward to is the SCC playoffs, which will be happening in a few weeks' time, AJ. I mean, well, potentially in a few weeks' time. Haven't been More information will become available More soon as the date. But uh, yes, seeing Pika Renoobs, uh, the Snake Pit, and as well Belt Slap, of course, going up against the top seed from SOC this, uh, this split around should be very exciting. But AJ, that was it. That was the last game of the year for regular season SCC EU. I must admit, it has been a roller coaster of a ride here on the EU SCC. It's been. It's had its ups and downs throughout the year. It's been wonderful to cast, especially with the, my talented co-casters, as well as production coming out from Jithins. It's mm. been unreal to have the opportunity to have done this experience for this season, and hopefully I can do so again next year. But it remains to be seen. Yeah, I want to also say thank you. Obviously, I came in halfway through the, the season, and... I've had a wonderful time. I've gotten to work with so many amazing people because of it. And I love this job. I, I sit here during games and I smile at myself and I go, this is good. This is, I, this is a thing that I get to do. And it's fantastic. So from all of us here at the European side of the Smite Challenger circuit, thank you all for watching, ladies and gents. And we will see you at playoffs.